Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I will talk about trains. Okay, big surprise that here at a place called Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories that I would talk about trains. Today, though, I want to go over a bit more as to why there are trains. Do we have trains just because of habit? Is there something better about trains than other means of transport? Here's a quote from a broadcast many years ago by Al Swift, a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from the state of Washington. Swift was at that time the chair of the House Transportation Subcommittee. Some may think a train is just romance and nostalgia, all whistles in the night. It is not. Rail is one of the most cost-effective, environmentally friendly, energy-efficient modes in existence. On behalf of our team here at RLMS, we heartily agree. So let's look again at the why of trains. Like all transportation operations, there are ups and downs. When it is necessary to move loads about, and especially large and heavy ones, trains immediately come to the forefront. A fundamental point, as I once made early on in this series, is that it is much easier to pull a load over land using some kind of wheeled vehicle. And while it is easier to pull a wagon over a dirt road, and easier yet on a better paved one, the effort needed to pull wagons along rails is the easiest of all. To put this in the simplest technical terms as possible, it's all about friction. You see, friction has a lot to do with the total area of contact between the wheel and the road. So by using rails and a wagon with rail wheels, you keep the contact very small. In this way, the total rolling resistance is kept very low. Thus, the steel wheel on the steel rail allowed larger and heavier loads as well as many people to be carried. The heavy weight of rail equipment is easy to see. But it is often forgotten just how low the rolling resistance of rail vehicles are. While we do not have video of it happening, it is known that if a rail wagon does not have its brakes set correctly, there have been cases where a car has gone rolling away in a strong breeze. One important piece of technology of almost all wheeled land vehicles is the bearing. A bearing is the point where the wheel or its axle turns. You may be asking, hey Kevin, isn't this a bit more than basic? Well, yes, but bear with me a moment. <sighs> Any wheeled cart, wagon, or road vehicle has some sort of bearing. How good these bearings are is one of the most fundamental parts of any rail vehicle. Of course, even the very earliest of vehicles had some kind of simple bearing, but as they either did not weigh all that much or did not move all that fast, it was not too hard for these early simple bearings to do an okay job. With the advent of, say, steam power, the loads became much greater and the speeds certainly increased a lot. The need for a much improved bearing was not only obvious, but imperative. The wheel bearing and railroading have a lot to do with each other. For a long time, the plane bearing was used. It was not only simple and was relatively inexpensive, but it also worked pretty well. Ah, but there was one grave drawback to the plane bearing. It needed a lot of looking after. This type of bearing needed to be inspected daily, or probably much more often. Even when taken care of, they could, and did, catch fire. The train would then need to be stopped, and the crew would lose valuable time taking care to repair the overheated bearing. If not attended too quickly, a hot bearing could cause the train to derail. 
One of the jobs of the crew riding in a railroad caboose was to watch over their train in front of them, looking and often smelling for hot boxes or overheated bearings. So just what is a plane bearing? Here is a diagram of a plane bearing. This is the axle. And this is the bearing surface. Below here is oil and cotton waste. The cotton helps to wick the oil up and around the axle. Often, the cotton would get wedged into the axle, and if the journal box was low on oil, the cotton might ignite from the friction. This really did happen, and happened far more often than many think. This is known as a hot box. The journal box has a lid so that oil and cotton waste can be added or sometimes removed and replaced as train crews could pull the burning cotton out of the journal before it set the car on fire. As I said before, this kind of bearing needs a lot of attention. The plane bearing was in use from the dawn of the railways until the mid 20th century and it was not until the latter part of the 20th century that the plane bearing was laid to rest. A great deal of the problems of the plane bearing were overcome with the advent of practical roller bearings. The first attempts at a roller bearing were made as early as 1828 by Ross Winans. This device was called the friction wheel bearing. While this device reduced rolling friction by a, to a very small amount, it unfortunately also wore out very fast. The problem of cost-effective roller bearing would take some time. By the 1870s, some light streetcars were using roller bearings, but it would not be until the early years of the 20th century that better bearings started to be adopted by the mainline railways. In 1924, the Pennsylvania Railway tried out some bearings from the Swedish SKF firm. The bearings were fitted to six passenger cars, and these bearings were still in service in 1946 when the cars were retired. Even freight cars started to receive roller bearings in the middle part of the 20th century, as it was found that the new bearings often gave more than 10 years of trouble-free running. So what's the big deal about bearings? Well, first thing is that the better the bearing, the less energy is needed to pull the cars. Improved bearings also allowed much greater weights to be carried. Again, the railways came forward as they had from the first, being the best way to carry heavy loads more easily than by any other means. While this kind of modern bearing can also fail, this does not happen very often. And mostly this kind of bearing does its job so well that it can go without any kind of servicing for years. The why of trains comes down to the fact that there is no easier or more efficient way to move goods or people over land. And as always, we'll see you on the train. Whatever kind of bearings it uses.